She's down at A Taste of Lakeport playing music. You're listening to Dante Diamici instead of Poor Substitute, I know. Anyway, the reason I played Oh Weird Al's Another One Rides the Bus is because we still have the uh, transit strike going on, although it's not a strike anymore, it's a lockout. Very messy, very brutal, and it's just uh, another indication of how uh, labor in these times is completely outgunned and outmaneuvered. It was a bloodbath. We are now uh, moving into the phase two of their uh, resumption of services, which is a euphemism for (laughs) break the unions back. Anyway, I'll just review a few things. If somebody wants to uh, call up, I'll take a chance and fumble with the phones. And um, if not, we'll segue into the uh, from uh, the transit strike proper to uh, how our local media covered this event, which caused so much stress and how it didn't cover it, and what we can do about it. What do we have for local media? What can we create as a local media substitute? All right. I see a phone. I'm going to attempt the impossible and see if I can get them on. Go ahead, caller. I think you're on the air. Maybe not. All right. Uh, I know what we need to do. I know what we need to do. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. I think. Nope. He hung up. I didn't have the pot up or the right one. But we'll get him next time. Anyway, uh, we may have a little report about 20, 25 after uh, 5 on the... uh, the GE free booth down there at a taste of uh, Lakeport, and uh, I should be I should be hearing some things. All right. If you'd like to make a call, please hang. You can tell I don't do this that often. Anyway, going over the uh, transit strike, I mentioned it was a bloodbath. Uh, They've uh, replaced a large number of drivers, and uh, they'll be replacing a lot more next week, September 1st. All right, we've got phone one. Go ahead, caller. I'm almost certain you're on the air. Well, I'll try. How's that, Dante? Yes. Or should I call you number 39? <laughs> number 39, that's me. Oh, yes. Uh, the 39, Dante. Oh, well, my dear. 39 out of 39. Yes, I know. Well, I called the director and said, how come you're doing this union busting stuff? He said, we're not union busting. And I said, what do you call a lockout? We didn't lock anybody up. Yeah. I don't know what they're calling this, but, you know, it's a terrible state of affairs. I think we should just kick them out and take over the bus company well, and run it by and for Lake County. Well, they are obviously well trained, and yes, what they have done is they've taken the literal interpretation of the law and are interpreting it the way they want well, for their gee, advantage. Where have we heard this before? Oh, My goodness. Yeah. Well, carry on, my dear. I just thought it would be nice (laughs) to see if you could handle the phone. Anyway, I'm glad you figured it out. Yeah, it was, uh, I usually get things half right, but you know, it's, it, that's usually good enough for school, but out in the real world, the <laughs> reality <laughs> expects you to get everything right. Oh, well, you know, like residing from the union when you're not a member. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, uh, that's, that's almost not even going to be in my hands anymore because I filed. Oh, when's com- your hearing? Uh, well, I filed a complaint with the, uh, the oh, National uh, Labor Board. Oh, good. And uh, so I don't know how long that's going to take. Maybe a year, you know. It doesn't matter. But we'll you them. know, but at least they've got uh, they've got the muscle to stand up. Uh, yeah, I know. But, but of, the more uh, hey, a crowd of gnats can do a pretty good job of irritating even a corporation. <laughs> well, I've been to the Lake County uh, Transit Authority, and uh-huh. uh, they have no interest in. Uh, of course. 
not. They have no interest and, in anything but money. They're and, a corporation. And the union needs to start reading things line by line, like, yeah, I know. Uh, like paratransit does. I mean, yeah, it I was, know. they need to, you know, the details are, you know, the devil is in the details, as no, they say. Is. Now, what I would have done, rather than pretend there's things in the contract that I didn't know if they were in the contract or not, because because I didn't go through it line by line, oh my. I would have said, here's how things work. If you really wanted to do uh, something for our local residents in spite of whatever's in that contract, a contract which expires in two years, I would say that, uh, you know, go up to one of you, one of you who knows how to do this, and I know one of, one of the reps on the board knows how to do this technique very well. Just say in a calm voice, you know, you know, it would, it would really, really, really um, um, make us, uh, make our lives a lot easier if uh, this strike was ended right now without any fallout. You know, just make our lives a whole lot well, easier. Yeah. Now, now you haven't said anything that would pressure them anyway. But, you know... You're what, making a statement. Yeah, preference. you're just saying in a calm way. But, you know, that, those are the words. You use uh, expressions yeah. and body language I that know. says a different message. And you know what that message is? Even though you just expressed a hope that uh, <laughs> things will end, you know, because it'll make your uh -huh. life easier. Oh, but, yeah. But what you say with your body language and your <laughs> expressions is something different. What you say with your body language uh -huh. and expressions when you say this is you know that let her be your last act on earth you, essentially what you say is what you're saying <laughs> is is that we want this thing to end yeah. now right otherwise you can take your ill-gotten gains between now and the mm -hmm. end of your contract and enjoy them in hell because you'll never get another dollar uh -huh. out of our poor uh, Oh, county. I think that would be excellent. You know, I, w I was wondering, since they think that the buses are being stalked, I don't know how you stalk a bus, but if I see one, if I yell scab, are they going to blame the union? Well, it, as of this point, three of the uh, drivers are not scabs because oh, really? uh, yeah. because if phase one of their replacement uh, strategy, after they've uh, salted the uh, ranks with replacement drivers, they ha they still had three slots left to bring the top three seniority drivers back on. Uh -huh. so well, I think I think what they came up with that, that stalking idea was that I'd heard some of the new drivers had had accidents. So I think they're trying to claim that the poor buses are being stalked, and that's what's making them have accidents. Well, remember, new drivers are going to have a higher incidence too. You know, to well, be sure. fair, to be fair, you know, if, since I don't know the qualifications of these new drivers, I could say that any additional problems could be explained by the fact that they are new. Yeah, so and they probably don't even know their way around the county. Yeah, so most of our problem, and any additional problems could be explained by the fact that we have more new drivers. I know. Isn't it wonderful? I don't ride buses. Yes. I wouldn't ride with a scab. Yeah. And I couldn't stand there and say, are you a union person or are you a scab? Anyway, thank well, you, Dante. I it's think more complicated should... now because we I know. have a few non-scabs. I know. Well, maybe they should put a little sign up and saying I'm not a scab or something. In their and house. actually, maybe none of them are scabs because technically... I know. The, this the thing is, is over. The, but yeah. if you started as a scab, I think you're always a scab as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> That's how I feel. Yeah, well, it's uh, definitely a, a, a situation where oh, yeah. desperate people have feel that they have to do desperate things. And, you know, as the economy keeps on imploding, you know, we didn't recover. I know. You know what happened was Wall Street went back out to play, uh -huh. and we called that a recovery. Well, yeah, but you've got to remember that back in 2000, the Census Bureau said there were 30 million Americans who were living in poverty, and recently they figured it's 50 million with another 51 million you know, trembling on the brink. And, you know, while all that's going on, the super-rich have somewhere near $180 trillion tucked away in offshore tax shelters. Yeah, but, you know, all of us, all of us poor people, because of that, all of us poor people have the opportunity to become rich. And that's what America is all about, right? 
Isn't no. that what we've heard over and over? Well, so, we've uh, heard that, but we've heard a bunch of lies along with it. You know, like I, anybody could, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Sure, if your daddy's rich, you know. I, I know, I know, uh, I know poor people who bought this. They've been programmed. They say, well, you know, I don't really want socialism because, you know, I always want the opportunity to become rich. And even if I don't become rich, my kids will become rich, you know. Boy, are so, they living in a fantasy they've world. Been, they've been well trained. Well, yeah, well, and Mickey Mouse should be president. Yeah, it's, uh, and maybe that would be true if the game wasn't rigged. Maybe, well, yeah. yeah w- but Mickey don't... wouldn't have to worry about assassination. <laughs> <laughs> I should let you go, Dante. Okay, you probably I'm just have gonna, other people. I'll finish up a couple more points on okay. this just to bring people up. And then I'm going to actually probably get a call from Lorna over there, there at GE Free. And then I'm going to talk about our local media and lack of it. Uh-huh. In, Good idea. And, I'll leave uh, you to that. Carry right. on, my dear. All right. Let's hit this so where it doesn't make noises at me all right i think i got it just in time anyway and like i say i'm not going to beat the transit thing to death i'm just going to cover a couple things if nobody wants to talk about it then i'm going to move on all right we have the um at the last transit authority meeting uh somebody basically excused the fact that it was a lousy contract by saying, hey, we only had three companies that wanted to come in here and take it over. Well, for Lake County, for a major operation, three is not that bad. We've seen major projects and uh, major bids go out where we only had one or two uh, proposals come back. Three is not that bad. We weren't that desperate. We didn't have to give away the farm. We just did. Anyway, the, uh, the big problem, and something I'm interested in because I have a background in economics, is I would like to deal with this big, big discrepancy between uh, what the unions say, uh, their, uh, their um, step increase uh, resumption would cost, and what paratransit says it would cost. It's like over a 400% difference. And they say they used only the best numbers. Well, somebody's lying. Or maybe it's a combination of lying and incompetence on both sides. I don't know. But I do know this. The numbers are the numbers. And if the numbers were public, we wouldn't have to rely on what paratransit says or the, what the union says, we could crunch our own numbers. There's plenty of competent people out there, backgrounds in economics, CPAs. We can just crunch the numbers ourselves. We won't have to trust anybody. You know, we will gain knowledge um, by our own efforts. But where do we get these numbers? I don't know. I'd like to find out. And that's what I'm going to be focused on. There's other issues, but that's what I want to focus on. Because once those accurate numbers are crunched, we will know who's lying. And, uh, yeah, I guess it could be. There's enough, dis- there's enough wiggle room that it could be two people. Anyway, and so we have phase two coming up. Well, uh, when they're going to finish the uh, reestablishment of service... And these drivers coming on will be all the original, uh, from the original driver list. They'll fill up the slots. And what's left uh, on the list is what got replaced. And so um, September 1st, we'll know the total damage toll from this uh, highly skilled, highly aggressive and creative organization. Um, anti-labor practices. I won't say it's union busting. It amounts to that. But it it really comes down to anti-labor and anti-people. And since the community is dependent on better wages, it's anti-community too. Because many of these drivers, uh, because they had some seniority, are replaced with beginning drivers. So they're paid less which means less money going into the community. Um, A fact that might be lost on the transit authority. Okay, I covered that. Uh, 
I don't know if I'll beat their creative, uh, some of the creative math I've seen uh, before. Uh, paratransit's uh, assertion that two out of 39 is less than 1%. Um, back when I was in sixth grade, it was uh, closer to 5%. But, you know, what do I know? And uh, let me see, two at large, the Lake Transit Authority, for anybody who's interested, is two from Lakeport City Council, two from the Board of Supervisors, two from the City of Clear Lake City Council, and two at large. Now, what's uh, very interesting is one of the two from Lakeport, one of the su two supervisors, and one of the two city of Clear Lake reps are up for election next year. Those are the three I'm going to be focused on in, uh, in addition to the one at large person who made explicitly anti-union uh, statements, which might be okay if the other at large person was an explicitly pro-union uh, person. But I didn't get that. I didn't get that at all. Um, quick run by, quick, 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 uh, quick mention. Uh, Lake Co News mentioned, quoted the paratransit uh, in an aside, saying, "Well, we have a couple special cases that you know we have to you know deal with, so we have to be careful on that." Um, I'm one of those two special cases, by the way. It's nice to know somebody could cause somebody to be careful in this whole sorry episode. Uh, da, 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 relate this new sales tax. I would say, since the, um, the uh, ah, we do have a phone line. I was just about ready to abandon the whole topic. Uh. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Hey, Dante, I got a question. Go ahead. Do you know the proper name for a square-sided, square-bottom shovel, shovel specifically made for turning over dirt? Hmm. I just called it. Uh, uh, Starts with an S. Starts. Oh, is it something you could say on the radio? Ends with an E. Yes, you can say it on the radio. <laughs> I, I, I can't remember right now. Also, also one of the one of the. Um, <clears throat> members of a deck of cards. One of the member, like a jack? No. Mm, no. No, it yeah. ends with an E, starts with an F, and it's a member of a deck of cards? Yeah, it's not a diamond, it's not a heart. Uh, not a club, not a diamond, not a mm. heart. That would leave a spade. Ah, huh. okay, so you do know the word. Yes. So, um, presumably then, because you know the word, you might be able to call a spade a spade. It's union busting. Yeah. Yeah. But it's Thanks, a, but it's also anti labor. I, I you see I'm I'm a I'm the well, original union I'm the original union buster. I believe that the best way to bust a union and keep the unions out is to pay decent wages and treat people with respect. That's the most low down union busting trick I know of. Mm. Yep, that'll work most of the time. Yeah. And uh I haven't seen a lot of interest in that uh, foolproof uh, method. Not yeah, really. and, 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 and quite frankly, the, uh, the, the Teamsters didn't do themselves any favors in asking the Metropolitan Transit Authority to get inv in, involved here, seeing as most of the folks on it are pretty anti-labor. Yeah, and they made a lot of... I would say I would say what caused me to cringe a lot is they were they were using old techniques that worked pretty well up until about twenty years ago. No, they still work very well. Uh. They're not legal, but they work really well. <laughs> but we don't, you know, we don't worry about legalities around here. Uh, yeah, unless unless the other side is uh, doing them. Well, no, I you know you have to understand that. Um, the people on the management side of the labor management relations are, are trained to ignore the law because the law is written in favor of the populace, not in favor of the businesses. Well, I recognize the scripts I got when I was going, you know, 
face to face with Randy and uh, over the phone with uh, Wanda. Um, you can ignore the law in areas where there's no legal ramifications. Some laws you can ignore because there's no legal ramification. So it's like there was no law at all. And apparently they've been well schooled in what things they could do without having any legal repercussions. They're very good. I recognize somebody who's been programmed. They're very good. Well, you have to understand that the only time that there are legal ramifications is if somebody has the ability to bring the authority of the law to bear. And it, the authority of the law does not come to bear on its own. It, it, it requires being beckoned. And the beckoning is what costs money. Well, you know, let, let me give you an analogy. If, if I have a problem with the county, okay, and I, I assert that the county has, has violated a law, I can file a claim against the county. The claim, the claim will be denied. That's, that's done perfunctory, okay? Uh-huh. Now, I get to hire an attorney to sue the county. Well, who defends the county? Well, for routine okay. things, it's the county council. If it's scary... And, and who pay, and, but Stop, stop, right there. <laughs> who pays the county council? I do. So, you see, <laughs> this, the deck is stacked against you from the get-go, if you're an individual or uh -huh. if you're the community. The government taxes the community to fight against the community. We pay the opposition. Plain and simple. Well, so, in order to win, you have to have double the money. And it's pretty hard to have double the money of somebody that has a checkbook that you're filling. Uh, or, or, or find a way to catch them napping, but that's another show. There you go. See you, bye. <laughs> bye. All right, now we have another call. All right. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Yeah. Uh, so you were mentioned you were with the union, or are you, were you a union rep? Or? No, I was. Uh, I was a brand new employee. I hadn't. Oh, joined. just an employee. Yeah. Uh, with what? What union? I wasn't with any union. I hadn't joined Army? the union yet. I had oh. not joined the union. Oh, you didn't join the union. No, and uh, they, they they basically uh, said, "Well, you have to." Uh, because I got, I, you know, they could they could fire you for any reason during the first ninety days when you're right. Well, that's hired. with any job. I mean, they they basically. Yeah. Uh, I mean, actually, you know, nowadays they don't like hiring people. They they really do go through agencies, so they can't so they don't have to pay workman's comp. And the agency pays uh, you. You know what I'm saying? That's what makes it. Most jobs are are hire, are farmed out through agencies now. That's yeah. a common practice nowadays uh, because everybody's getting away from that workman's comp. Either that or they got employers that are causing. Having people 1099, which that means they work for themselves and they pay them cash, and then they're responsible for their own taxes. That way, they don't, they're exempt from paying uh, workman's comp. That's what a lot of people do too with money. You know what I'm saying? If you got money, uh, you just pay a person and you just tell them, "Hey, uh, I'm going to pay you cash," and they, and they act like they're going to like you're going to make more money, but you don't because you got to pay taxes on that. See, the problem, and you have no no benefits with that. See, so you know that's a problem. No, like Walmart does not want to pay no benefits. They don't pay no workman's comp. They don't pay no medical or anything like that. See, that's what they get away with. It, all these corporations basically uh, they, 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 they want employees to work for them but they don't want to give them nothing you know, then, you know well, basically they, a rich man doesn't want to have a guy working for him but he has, as far as uh, he doesn't want to pay for his, his medical or his uh, uh, if he doesn't happen to him he's on his own in other words he, he, he's, not, he's not responsible for him that's basically what, what's wrong with this world everybody, everybody wants to, everybody to do something but they don't want to take care of him you know what I'm saying that's what's wrong with everything you know what I'm saying everybody wants everybody to do something but they don't want to take care of him if they get hurt you know what I'm saying yeah, they want you to take the uh, the extra, they want you to take, extra take, risks. You know, take care, take, get your own insurance and take care of yourself. In other words, you got to get 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 that care and your your medical on your own. In other words, you're on your own, pal. In other words, you work for me and and you take care of your own. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we had a we had a uh, optional medical plan over there at the right. bus company. Right, right. And uh, they uh, this, the thing is is that if you paid for yourself and your wife, right. that would take right. up pretty much your whole check. And then, then you're left with nothing. How are you going to live? And how, how are you going to have groceries? How are you going to pay your rent? And how are you going to pay your PG or your water bill? You know what I mean? Well, that's that's their math. You know, that's right. their math. And 
and it's not our math. Right, right. Yeah. So anyway, that's what's wrong with with everything. It's just uh, the numbers don't add up, like you say. They don't jive. You know what I mean? You know, you got you got to prepare the for, before the fight. You know, because right. they're well, preparing. Right. That's why I put the cart, the cart in front of the horse, and you, you got, you're always pushing that damn uh, cart because you know uh, you're not in front of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're always behind behind the eight ball all the time. You know what I mean? So. Yep. So anyway, well, anyway, good stuff. Uh, uh, educate them out there, you know what I'm saying? And then people need to wake up, you know what I'm saying? I'll do my best. All right, bye. Talk to you later. Another call. Go ahead, caller. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I would just uh, wanted to put my two cents in about city council meeting. City council meeting? Oh, yeah. th that was uh, of Clear Lake last, yeah. last Thursday? Yeah. You know, I missed it because, you know, I've been working on so many things that are actually uh, mm. uh, far more important than that white trash melodrama that goes on down there. Yeah. Well, um, Jerry is just, to me, a, a, a wonderful human. Um, she does a lot for our community. She goes above and beyond. And um, what I live in Lower Lake, actually, about there to support her. But I just wanted to put it out there that I, it was almost laughable. The, the three things that all those members, Joey Lewis, Luis, the Joey Silverton, Denise, every one of them, their three complaints about Jerry, Madam Mayor, was that she came in on a Saturday. There was a room that was used as storage and ladders and so forth. They didn't have a break room. So she decided to come in, Jerry come in on a Saturday with her husband, paid for paint, Painted this room, cleaned the table, cleaned the refrigerator out, and washed the chairs so they'd have a break room. So, and she she planted flowers in a flower box up in the front of city council, and she would water them once a week. And she also put a plaque in the hall of our servicemen that are serving in Iraq and Afghanistan. So every one of them, uh, they Joyce Overton, she, I'm sorry, she was like a shrugged up prune. She, it, the only thing you could see was jealousy coming out of every one of those council members because if that's all they had, and it sounds, they all sounded like they were first or second graders, by Jerry and her husband cleaning the, the, the room up and painting it and making a break room, they said that it hurt their feelings. Well, a lot of people say, you know, there's other issues, and, and you know, there's, and they're just not, they're not bringing them up. No, they're not, but if you, if you would have saw what I saw, it was just like there were a bunch she of, her own time. yeah, and, and, you know, she did it on her own time, you know, but I'm sure there are other issues, but the way that they conducted themselves, Joey was talking about Frank Rivero and the fact that she didn't recall the, that they wanted to join the BOS for the recall, um, it, it, it's pure corruption. So I just kind of wanted to put that out there. It was actually, it was embarrassing. If I were those council members, I'd be embarrassed. And I hope one of them is listening tonight because they, they acted like first graders. They all whined like little children Don't. that their feelings were hurt. And the, you know what? The, and every one of us sitting out there came to the conclusion we're going, oh, my God, they're jealous of this woman. Well, I've, I've seen them come to conclusions on things without any information many, many, many times. Uh, uh, that, really? That's just Clear Lake City Council. It's it's not embarrassing. It's Jerry Springer on the lake. Yeah, it is. It's a joke. You're absolutely right. It's a joke. Okay, let me get this other call. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, and that was... That was... Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. I just wanted to interject here with the with the mayor. I mean, she she's a tweaker, and she cannot be um, you know taking care of things that concern you know the the whole city and so on. So. You know, it's a good thing that Denise and whoever took uh, 
whatever is necessary steps in order to... She is, a, she is a tweaker or used to be a tweaker? She is. Well, usually I see the tweakers are kind of like squirming all the time and scratching and kind of, uh, you know, had that mouth thing going, you know, where they've got constantly got their, you know, their lips moving, you know, it's a... Really I, I don't know what the, what it is, but she she could be one person in one moment, and then once she tweaks, she will be all over the place. So I think that's what happened there with the with the console, and then they wasn't able to deal with it, and that's basically what it is. Well, I've seen I've seen a lot of dysfunction, and I don't know if I can blame. Everything on drugs. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, some, some of it point, might. Yeah. At some point, uh, uh, Kohler uh, suggested, uh, you know, uh, drug testing, and then, then it didn't happen. But I mean, it, it, if it happens in any kind of environment in every kind of corporation or company. Why can that happen? Or, or we can make it like a fundraiser. You know, like you have people sign up to be sponsors for people to go on walks. Why not have a thing where you, you get people to sign up as sponsors to have you take a drug test? You know, we'll just, you know, get a little, you know, fundraising going out of it. Exactly. You know, but make, the, it, make it a fun thing as opposed to the, kind of a, you know, police state thing, you know? But, well, I don't, I, don't, I don't think police state, but the bottom line is that this, this Jerry person is a big time tweaker. Yes. And thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Uh, and that's uh, one opinion. You know, actually, I have some other. I have my, some of my own opinions, but actually, they're even less complimentary. All right. All right. Somebody gave up. Somebody gave up. But we're still here. We're still here. And uh, anyway, I was expecting uh, GE Free to report in from uh, A Taste of Lakeport. Haven't got him yet. Anyway, I'd like to, uh, I think I've pretty much finished with that um, transit strike thing, unless somebody wants to talk about it. You know, I, I, I kind of know a little bit about it since I'm kind of at round zero. Let me get this call. They're back. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. No, you're not. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try again. All right. That's what happens when you get calls coming in on two lines. All right. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, it's still me. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't live in Lo uh, I don't live in Clear Lake, but uh, to me, I think it's a travesty that she got ousted, um, especially on something as BS as that. But uh, Anyway, uh, you know, she was in there. She was. She had a different agenda than normal uh, mayors that come in. That uh, I, I regret to call it a city, um, and she was doing okay. There was. She had different ideas, but does the county really want to stick with the same ideas that uh, you know as a whole? Are you talking about county or the city now? I'm talking about both. Oh, okay. As a city, as a county, do we really want to? Stick with the same stuff that we've been doing for decades now, or do we want to try something new where we can actually get a job in here, or actually make that uh, hate to say it city uh, look a little better than it does? So maybe somebody wants to put a business in one of those empty buildings. Well, they believe that the way to the future is to go back to the fifties, and what they don't seem to realize is our economy has shrunk. We have to do things radically different. And uh, doing things radically different is not something I see any interest in. Well, I, I liked what she was doing. At least she was trying something different and had a different approach. It, it's, you know, the same old thing has not been working, obviously. You know, that used to be a nice place prior to 1980 when they incorporated. You know, the county took care of the streets, and, they, they, uh, and it was more of a uh, um, uh, resort community still. Uh, I've been up here since the early 60s. Uh, yeah, it was. And it was still a nice place. Uh, it has done a crash dive since they incorporated in 1980. The whole thing is a mockery. The police force was full of highway patrol and sheriff rejects for a long time. Long time. 
And, I mean, they need to do something different because what they've been trying prior to this lady has not worked. Well, I had I had uh, my own idea, uh, and old Sergeant uh, Brady kind of liked my idea. And I told him that, you know, you know, it's like 63% plus an independent sales tax goes to fund the police. Clear Lake is basically a police department. And if that's all you wanted, you don't need to incorporate to have a police department. You could form a special assessment district like they did in the unincorporated incorporated area of Broadmoor in San Mateo and create, and you could have your own police department if you don't want a whole city based on an assessment district. And that's what they've done in Broadmoor. Well, that's what, you know, years ago, that's what they did in Clear Lake. They let all these mobile homes because they needed the tax base. They got the bigger city, but look what they got. You know, they weren't allowing these mobile homes in there for uh, permanent live-in. It was recreational. And then they change, They keep changing the zoning ordinances all over the place. Next thing you know, you got people living in stuff that was only meant to be a summer home, a weekend getaway. Well, that and, was... they've, and they've done nothing about it. Well, that's I told you, I've been here a long time. <laughs> But there was like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? And the fact is, people changed their recreation habits, and people screamed and said, look, people aren't coming up here anymore the way they used to. we got to get some money. Let's just turn our eyes here and... Well, they turned Clear Lake into White Trashville, and uh, they have done nothing about the lake. The lake is, in the last 10 years is beyond belief. Part of it might be the climate change. Part of it. Yeah. Uh, I, you know what? You trace it back to the vineyards going in. Yeah, nutrients in general, the vineyards, uh, oversaturated septic tanks, uh, and then there's all the minerals from all this grading instead septic of... Septic tanks are right up there on the yeah. chart. So it's... So uh, decades and decade, decades of septic tanks, just because you put in a sewer line, doesn't take that out of the ground. It's well, still it's in down. Yeah, and uh, and they uh, basically stopped enforcing the uh, mandatory hookup. If there's a uh, for new developments, if there's a uh, sewer in your street, they basically eliminated the mandatory hookup. In Clear Lake, too many people had their agenda. Oh, there's our GE free uh, reporter now. Yeah. Well, they've just trashed the, you know all the the nice resorts that there actually was on Old Fifty Three down there in Clear Lake. Yeah. Uh, well, you they're know, that. they're, they're low-income housing now full of uh, gang members. Yeah. And, and, the, and the harbors and the launching ramps are blocked off. Yeah, yeah. And there's, there's, there's uh, yeah, I actually spend a lot, of, I, I actually love talking about sewers, you know, and it's like the way they laid this, play at, this place out in their, 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 their postage stamp lots that had n no consideration for the uh, layout of the terrain. Clear Lake was definitely one of the top three poster children for the state, state map act. And, Are you talking uh, about the lake or the city? Uh, the city. Okay. Yeah, that was uh, definitely. I, I, I just didn't call it the Highlands. Yeah, yeah, it used to be called a high. Yeah. It, it was just a big patchwork design that, that just ignored the fact that there's up and down hills. And uh, that's why we have a state map act now to eliminate that type of haphazard d development that just creates uh, blight right from the beginning, before blight. the development. Some, somebody, somebody ought to take a drive up in, in the Clear Lake, up behind Napa Auto Parts in that area up there over toward... Uh, uh, oh, between between Old Fifty Three Napa Auto Parts and over to Olympic Drive, that is a, the biggest fire hazard I've ever seen in in such a small area. Hmm. And and it looks like a slum. I haven't been in there in years, and I took a drive through there the other day. It looks like a slum. You talk about fire hazard. Oh you're talking my about God. you're talking about West Fortieth Valley going around there and uh, yeah, Hillcrest. Th exactly. Yeah, I up actually, where it gets up high and then down to Yule and all that stuff. I think it's a, I think it's a charming road. The road the way it goes around that mountain there. You know, it goes around West West Fortieth uh, and it goes around up over it Hillcrest was a and then around road at Valley. One, uh, it was a charming road at one time with the rock walls and stuff like that. Now it's a slum. And it's a fire trap. Well, one good fire take, take will eliminate drive, that. Take a drive through there. I think well, get, I, I've get, done more than take a drive through. I've actually mapped it out for a foot race. Oof. Wow. 
Yeah, it's a it, it's a very very interesting. It's mostly you know, patch patchwork uh, potholes on patchwork potholes, but you know. Uh, minefield. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, minefield. But, is, but it, it, it does have a certain charm as long as you're. Uh, <laughs> Beautiful street, and, and and in the '60s and '70s, it still was. Uh huh. Still was. You know, so, sometimes sometimes all it takes is the 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 uh, the right people to just come in and say, you know, we're just going to act like uh, we're just going to act like decent people who have uh, a lot of uh, interesting things to do and uh, everything will be better just because we're better people there's still some really good people that live in there I know some people that live there yeah. and, but, then, but then you have a, an absolute <laughs> burning hole in the ground for lack of a better <laughs> word right next door uh, and they have so much stuff they're piling it on top of each other and lo and behold it's wooden plastic Backed up in dry grass, uh, and it goes mm. all the way to the house. Well, we do. And have, and, we have and a and pretty good fire department. Through, it's lot after lot after lot. Uh, probably, probably the reason we have a good fire department because it's a special assessment district and not part of the city. I know some of them guys too, and I hope they're good at their job. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'll get off the line. Let somebody else call. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Let's get this Bye. last call. Uh, Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Yeah. Yeah, the guy was talking about all the trash. It, it, really, the roads are, are lo and behold, the, these roads were made for horse, horse and buggy. Uh, it is not made for the, the traffic they have nowadays. That's the biggest problem with up here is the roads aren't, aren't even big enough for the traffic right now. And it's like, you know, accidents all the time. There's always accidents up here. It's like, you know, Russian roulette up here with these people that don't know how to drive. And uh, they don't know how to drive these roads. These roads aren't even made for the, the, with these buses and everything else they got going on, the school buses and everything else. I mean, it's, uh, there's no sidewalks for the people to walk and they get people in wheelchairs and walk and everything else, you know, man. So it's, 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 a, it's, you're taking a risk of running somebody over when you're on the road. You got to be real careful when you're driving down the road here in, in Correct. Yeah, that man. was that was the old development standards. Remember that uh, remember that Groucho Marx movie, uh, Coconut Grove, about this land uh, land developer shyster. And well, you know, a, a lot of it is pretty soon they're going to start doing that uh, uh, intimate domain, and they're going to start making these roads wider, and, and pretty soon people are going to realize that they're going to lose their property and probably lose their house because they're going to have to make the roads wide enough for trucks and for paramedics and uh, emergency vehicles. And when that happens, you know, when the state of California comes in here and, and takes over this place, uh, that's when it's all. Uh, that's when you're going to see seeing th things disappear, like these trailers and everything else, and it's going to be intimate domain, and 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 they're going to clean house, and and a lot. Be gonna be, be be chased out of here, you know, man. Only if you either fence the place in, no one, no one in, no one out, and that's probably the best thing to do. <laughs> well, only if they have a big checkbook. Only if they have a big checkbook because he, well, Donald Trump needs to come in here and build a big casino, you know, and blow it all out. <laughs> <laughs> a golf course, you know, man. The casinos will save us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let Reno and uh, Las Vegas come in here and blow it all out, you know, man. Like they wanted to before, you know. So well, this place could that, have been a nice place. That's when people that's will what? start getting run over is when they get the streets all paved and wide and then right, the trucks right. are going well, through there, you know, of, at, at 45 miles an hour. Here. There's a lot of crosswalks up here that, that, that you can't see no more because they don't they don't stripe them, they don't paint them, and a lot of people there's people been, been hitting those crosswalks. You can't walk across the street without getting hit nowadays. You got you got, you got to cross. Right, you got but, but people walk. aren't speeding because of, because of the speed bumps, potholes. I mean the speed bumps. Right, right. They're right. avoiding. Mm -hmm. they're, they're looking for the potholes. They're not looking for people. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, anyway, uh, good stuff. Anyway. Okay, Keller. Good show. Bye. Bye. All right. Uh, da, 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 point. All right. Go ahead, Lorna. All right. What have so, you got to report? Yeah. <laughs> I've been out on the street. We can hear Herb Gura and the rest of uh, Without a Net out there playing. I'm in Lakeport. Um, Taste of Lakeport. It's a big fundraiser for the Main Street Association. And I am dipping gazpacho um, for GE Free Lake County. That's gefreelake.org. And uh, we're passing out some literature. People, some people are more interested in the gazpacho, but we've had some people very interested That's in the. That's cold potato soup. No, it? it's cold tomato soup. Tomatoes. Some All say tomato, some <laughs> say potato. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a new twist, but uh, yeah, everybody's loving the gazpacho. It's made from um, uh, produce, all fresh, all raw, blended up. We've got tomatoes and cucumbers and uh, parsley and basil, peppers. 
So it's wonderful stuff, and we're um, promoting GE Free Lake County. Pretty soon we're going to be all under an umbrella where donations will be tax-free. So we're continuing to be busy here in Lake County, um, pr promoting uh, no GE foods, um, trying to get people to uh, shop and avoid gen genetically engineered foods uh, when they garden um, to avoid the genetically engineered as well. Do people actually know what that term even means, genetically engineered? Oh, that's when they do things in a laboratory that couldn't possibly be done out in a field. I had a, or at your kitchen table, I had a lady ask me, she says, well, her father, lady was probably several years older than I am, and she said her father had taught her how to um, graft. And she loved to graft, and she was getting really concerned because she thought that maybe she was making genetically engineered foods by grafting. I said, no, if you didn't have to put on gloves and a mask and suit up and go into a sterile laboratory or a not-so-sterile laboratory, you probably um, aren't uh, making GE foods in your living room or in your garden. These are things, ungodly things that they do to uh, make the gen genetically engineered foods. Ungodly. So Ungodly. these are completely atheist type of activities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, they make the atheists look like the good guys, which... <laughs> uh, anyway, so... so you, yeah, you're it's just inserting genes from one species into another species. Uh, it's very different than um, hybridizing or, like I was saying, grafting or, um, you know, playing around moving pollen from one plant to another. It's a lot deeper. It's done on a cellular, cellular level. Now, I, I seem to remember on very, very rare occasions, sometimes viruses will pick up a chunk of a gene from one uh, species and stick it on to another. Right. They use the, they use the E. coli and other viruses to um, move the genes, like from a fish, yeah. into a tomato. Yeah, of course, that's a bacteria, Escherichia coli. Ah. Yeah. I think they use viruses as well. I yeah. wouldn't, yeah. I'm not a scientist, but... But I play one on... Uh, <laughs> on Herb's <laughs> radio show. <laughs> on 88.1. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Herb's down there barefoot and rocking. People are dancing in the street. Is is he playing drums or is he playing? Uh, uh, he's guitar? playing. Uh, well, from what I can see at my post down to his post, he's playing drums and uh, singing, of course. He's probably yeah. having more fun than uh, doing his radio show. Yeah, <laughs> the air is nice and fresh out there. It's a beautiful evening. All right. Okay. I'm just kind of like halfway looking at my uh, my uh, phones there. I got a CD stuck in one of these things. I'll deal with that later. Anyway, I was just finished. I had finished up with the transit thing, and people wanted to get into the uh, the uh, politics of uh, of uh, Clear Lake, but um, and I guess that's over with. And uh, but you know, I was interested in talking about the fact that we had so little critical local media. You know, media that actually ask questions instead of just taking, you know, reports from the people who have power and just kind of dummy up some kind of article from those reports. Um, we don't have uh, very much in the way of independent uh, uh, writers, I should say, editorialists. Even. Uh -huh. Well, even the blogs. There's, there's bloggers around. Well, I don't trying follow. trying to find out. Because, yeah. you know, we've got KPFZ. They have, uh, like, three or four programmers that deal with issues. And uh, we've got, uh, you know, we've got uh, Lake Co. News. But that's just one of, uh, not Lake Co. News so much. She's kind of take a report-taking type of person. But uh, Lake Co. Magazine. But she's got other activities. Um, the Outlook. Yeah, and the Outlook. But that's a once-a-month thing. It's you know, once a month. And she's always, uh, when I heard her speak on KPFC a few months ago, she said she's always looking for local content yeah. that she's interested, just, um, you know, doesn't have the knowledge to sit there and do the writing about oh, it. Yeah. So, but she said she's yeah. always wanting local content. Yeah. Oh, while well, I've got folks on the radio. <laughs> I am. It's also a GE-free Lake County project, and I'm trying to amass a bunch uh, or amass some um, uh, 
poetry and music on different themes, anything about healthy eating or gardening, um, sovereignty, food sovereignty, uh, local sustainability kind of issue. So if anybody has, they can email me. And this is Lorna. And you can email me at poetryshared, P-O-E-T-R-Y-S-H-A-R-E-D, poetryshared at yahoo.com. Um, or find my Facebook page and message me on Facebook. And I've already gotten some wonderful um, contributions. I've got a catalog of poetry, but looking for more. I've got a couple of wonderful songs and people that are more than willing to write just for this project. So if you have something to add, please email me or message me on Facebook. And now that's going to be given out as a premium for, for donations, well, right? Well, we'll see when it gets done. <laughs> see, what, see, see who has to be cut in. Yeah, there's always somebody who has to be yeah. cut in. The G, GE Free Lake County has recently been, or I, I'm pretty sure it's a done deal, that we're uh, going to be umbrellaed by the Cloud Forest Institute out of uh, Ukiah and Philo. And that'll mean that, that any donations would be tax deductible. So we can keep doing things like handing out our flyers at events, um, the GE free shopping guides, and just uh, having these wonderful opportunities to uh, answer people's questions and to see where people stand on things. You mean as far as, you know, yeah, I'm against that GMO stuff, you know, or yeah. I'm all in favor of GMO. I don't even know what it means that <laughs> I'm in favor. It's just because you're against it, I'm in favor of it. Well, one of the big issues is them growing it in the county because once the genetically modified seed comes into the county um, for alfalfa or corn, that's uh, can get into the, uh, I mean, it, organic is really... Um, an excellent way for farmers to seriously uh, have a, a healthy farm, be taking care of the earth, and bringing healthy foods, and making good money because the GE uh, or the the organic produce is um, has a real premium. So the prices are coming down, but it's still a wonderful way. And if, if Lake County could just not have any genetically engineered foods being grown within the county that would make our um, all of our agricultural goods more valuable and healthier. You mean they could, be, be, because the county would have sort of like a no GMO stamp on it? Oh, that would be so beautiful. Down in Sonoma County, they grow mustard between the uh, rows of um, grapevines as a cover crop to return the nitrogen into the soil. But if they're growing genetically engineered, is it the alfalfa or the corn? One of them will cross in with the mustard, the wild mustard. And um, I think it's the corn, and then the wild mustard starts producing the uh, Bt toxins. Uh, the perversions, yeah. mustard line with corn. It's Sodom and Gomorrah all uh, over again. And the bees are not having any fun. Yeah. I think that all may, that that's important if you want to draw people here to uh, actually actually eat stuff here in Lake County and have Lake County labels on it. But if you're just growing stuff just to go into the general American market, if you just have that type of short sightedness, eh, probably probably doesn't have any added value. Well, we don't have huge you know farmlands. We have little bits and pieces here and there. Um, so. We're not commercial growers except for the pears and the walnuts. But we're not going to be commercially growing um, wheat or beans or anything like that, corn, alfalfa, basically growing for use within the county. <clears throat> so you're keeping your animals free, you're keeping your family or, or healthy, keeping the animals healthy, keeping the uh, waters healthy, keeping the land healthy. So All right, we're just, just about out of time. One quick question. No, 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 no. How, how are they treating you down there at uh, Taste of Lakeport? Are they the GE free people? Are they you know, like looking at you like you smell bad or something? Yo! <laughs> no, no. I, yeah. Mick, you know, nobody has, uh, we haven't heard one negative word about the GE oh, that's good. free. Um, a lot of positive stuff. The young families are interested and knowledgeable. 
So kind of doing a little preaching to the choir on, uh, with some of the people. Other people are, um, <clears throat> are learning. So we're doing some real education as well. A kind of a mixed bag. All right. I see, I see, I see Flipper sort of like milling around. I, he, I, he should be already in here. I don't know why he isn't. Anyway, I'm going to uh, go out with a little song, something that's uh, my homeland song. Yes, yes, this is a song from my homeland. So, next week, Herb Gurr will be back. This has been Dante Dimitri on The Law Show.